they ain't know what you got them. They ain't know what you got them. Hi guys, welcome back to The Real Dana, AKA Dana with the data. Today, I want to talk about Jewish Voice for Peace. It is an organization called Jewish Voice, Jewish Voice for Peace, NYC. And they shut down Grand Central Station in New York City on Friday, October 27th. So let me just give you a little bit of background on Grand Central. Um, Grand Central Station, especially on a Friday, is jam-packed because you're talking about a weekend People are leaving out of the city to go, you know, to upstate, to their homes upstate um, or anywhere else. And Grand Central Station, oh, it is grand. Um, it is nice. And um, it makes New York Penn Station look like the projects. So Jewish Voice for Peace NYC shut down Grand Central Station during rush hour on a Friday. And I appreciate that. But why did they do that? Why? Because they are calling for a ceasefire. That's um, what's going on over in Gaza, Israel, Middle East. They're calling for a ceasefire against the, what is against the Palestinians. So Kudos to those young people, it was older people there, but mainly young people calling a ceasefire. Um, they also had other groups that were their allies um, protesting for the same thing. Now, they did get arrested. They did get arrested. Um, the MTA, I think it was like a dozen of MTA buses with all the people they were arresting, but they did demonstrate a peaceful protest. So within their organization, they sent out a call to action. Hey, come to Grand Central Station before 5 p.m. because the police officers were locking the doors at 5 to where nobody can't get in. So be at Grand Central before 5 p.m. We're going to shut it down. We're going to protest. We're going to do a sit-in in the Grand Concourse for a ceasefire. And so this is outside of the Grand Central. It was people outside. So if these are the people, I guess, that came after five, they couldn't get in, but they shut down even the outside part, part of Grand Central. You have the Mandebel Avenue, Park Avenue. You have the, the bridge um, right there. So this is like a main transportation hub, and it was shut down by the Jewish Voice for Peace organization. So while the Jewish Voice for Peace shut down Grand Central on Friday, Sunday, yesterday, well, I saw this video yesterday on um, Twitter, and so I believe this took place yesterday. Palestinians protested across the Brooklyn Bridge and shut down the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> So I want to highlight something, right? Because both protests <clears throat> on Friday at Grand Central and here going um, across the Brooklyn Bridge were peaceful. And that is your constitutional right here in America. Um, in America, you are you have the right to peaceful protest. 
But what I am noticing, um, I am seeing the younger generation calling out, protesting, organizing, and taking to the streets for justice and a ceasefire. So I want to bring in the baby boomers because when I say younger generation, I'm talking about my generation, Gen X, the millennials and the Gen Zs. These are the people we see out here in masses, right? Even over the weekend in London, um, there were thousands, a hundred thousand people crossing the London bridge as well. Young people. And I really appreciate that because what is going on is we're starting to see <clears throat> today what the baby boomers, when they were younger, what they were doing, protesting against the Vietnam War, protesting against um, injustice when it comes to the civil rights movement, you know, for black liberation. The baby boomers today were the young people then in the 60s and the 70s protesting against what our government here was doing and abroad. And I'm seeing that be reincarnated today of what is going on over in um, the Middle East, or shall I say the Gaza Strip. And I like I like that. I like to see that. But I do want to bring in the Black factor, right? Because I'm Black. My platform do center around Black culture and news. But I want to bring in a Black factor here. I'm going to do a compare and contrast. Because again, like I said, the baby boomers, right? Let's say the black baby boomers, they were out there protesting against the Vietnam War. We had the Black Panthers. We had the civil rights movement, all that. Today, I don't see it as much. When Black Lives Matter came out, you saw everyone, not just black people, it was everyone out there taking to the street, Black Lives Matter, right? Great. Now, what is going on, what is going on with the Palestinians over in the Gaza Strip? And you do have a lot of Jewish people um, supporting them. I don't see that same energy for the young Black Americans today. And I also want to bring into the fold here. What if all of these hundreds of thousands of people crossing the Brooklyn Bridge in New York were Black and marching for reparations? Peaceful protests, right? Just like this. Will we get the same kind of, you know, respect? Um, the same type of consideration to where the police officers will allow us to do it. Mind you, I don't know if they got a, a permit to protest across the Brooklyn Bridge or they just organize, say, hey, we're meeting here at this time and this is where we're going to be marching to and from. Because you're shutting down a Brooklyn Bridge. That's nothing small. So I'm pretty sure the people driving, even on a Sunday, are pissed. Just like I will be pissed on a Friday, Grand Central shut down because of protesters. And I just want to leave work and go home. So I wonder if they got a, um, a permit. But what Black people have been, what, what Black protesters, if this was all Black marching in New York, marching, whether it's in D.C., you know, Boston, where have you. Will we receive the same dignity and the same treatment to allow us to protest in masses that the Jewish people and the young Palestinian people are receiving from law enforcement? It's just a question. And I'm going to say, yes, I think we would. I think we would because if you had 100,000 Black people protesting crossing the Brooklyn Bridge in the name of reparations or 100,000 Black people marching um, in D.C., right? We will receive the same type of dignity and respect from law enforcement because America is not in a good position right now to be shown in a negative light. So why are we not? Why are we not out in a in hundred thousands of numbers protesting for reparations? And I get it. I put out a last video where I said, Mr. Louis Farrakhan, you know, comparing the similarities between black Americans and Palestinians. It was people in my comment section upset with me. What I said about the black Israelites and what I said that, yes, that Palestinians and black Americans, we do have similarities as far as our struggles. 
people were upset with me, right? You know, they were pushing back and that's fine. So, okay, if you're saying that what's going on over there has nothing to do with us here, why are we not out protesting in D.C., in New York, in Chicago, in in 100,000K in numbers for reparations? Because when you start seeing massive protests like we're seeing today with young Jewish people, young Palestinians on college campuses, out on the streets in London, worldwide, when you see that, it does make a difference. It does. It does. So how about we take that same energy and use it for our benefit, for our fight, for our cause. I just want to say that I I like seeing young people, Gen X, millennials, Gen Zs, standing up for what you believe in, um, using your constitutional rights and fighting for what you believe in, fighting for justice, fighting for peace. We need to see more of that. And I definitely want to see Black Americans. And I want the Black immigrants to be in solidarity with us. And I want other groups to be in solidarity with us fighting for Black Americans' reparations here in America. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please share this video. Comment below, like the video, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, go to my website, therealdanaNetwork.com, and sign up to the mailing list. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Dana, with your dad, I'm Dana, with your dad, I'm